Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today for a month or so of Dino, we're taking a first impressions look at another game to share the name Jurassic Park, but not one that came from the initial batch. This is Jurassic Park for the Sega CD, which Sega licensed separately, and unlike with the Genesis game, for this one they were told they're not allowed to use any of the characters' likenesses from the movie. So, this takes place after the movie, and we are being sent to the island to recover eggs, is what I believe the story is here. This also has a bunch of appearances from an actual paleontologist, Robert Baker, or Backer, I guess it's Backer probably, who is uh, kind of important in the field. But he is kind of our guiding character for most of this. Also, unlike basically every other Jurassic Park game, unless you count the Telltale game as a point-and-click adventure game, this is a point-and-click adventure game. <laughs> Which, you know, with the Sega CD, there was basically like, you got point-and-click adventure games, or you got those games that are basically just animations, where you press a button to make them continue. You know, QTE animations. <laughs> This is some wacky music. What's with the whistles? Also, I didn't realize the Sega CD had like a total jam that plays when you first boot it up. Oh, now we got screaming. <laughs> what is this track? But yeah, that that track that plays when you first boot it up and you have to press start. You are heading to Jurassic Park. Is pretty good. Your mission, should you choose to accept it. Find the eggs of seven species of dinosaurs. Take the eggs to the visitor center and put them in the incubator. Work fast, you only have 12 hours. And that is a real time limit. There is just a clock in the top right that counts down. You survived the crash. Could you tell there was a crash from just a flash of white and some helicopter sounds? But your life is still in danger. All right, so here we are. There's our crashed helicopter. Don't really know how we survived that or why we crashed. But yeah, this is uh, basically the game. You can see there's our 12 hour time limit at the top right. However, this is not a very long game. So I think that 12 hour time limit is actually pretty generous. Basically, we just have to travel around the island and find some eggs. That's our job. This is our inventory. I forget what the examine button is. There's only three buttons, so... There we go. And we picked up... The Stunner. It's not Stone Cold, though. It's just a regular Stunner. So I think we can use that to blast any dinosaurs that give us sass. What else do we got around here? I'm guessing you can only interact with something if you get the little cursor when you mouse over it. Or I guess D-pad over it. Unless it is one of these, which is a travel location. That's a separate button. So let's see. Visitor center is this way. I don't know if we have a map or anything. Okay, well there's the, the dinosaur eggs. So... What do we got here? The second one is Dilophosaur. The third one is probably Gallimimus. I don't know. It looks too faint to be a raptor silhouette. And the raptor's on the end there. Uh, the fourth one might be uh, Compi. Triceratops, T-Rex. Not sure what the first one is. The first one might be Pteranodon. But yeah. Wh why does it say dead? Is it possible to destroy the eggs? Wouldn't that, like, automatically fail you? Okay, yeah, there's seemingly nothing else around here, so... I guess the only way we can go is towards the visitor center. Let me get a little <laughs> FMV transition. So yeah, I'm surprised that this is the only... like, point-and-click adventure game set in Jurassic Park, because... You'd think that this kind of exploring around the island and trying to find where to go would be pretty good for this sort of format. And again, Telltale didn't even really do a full-on point-and-click adventure game. He's staring right at me. They're also not on the list. We don't need their eggs.
Okay, I guess we're reading the sign. To operate this kiosk, the Brachiosaurus CD is required. Okay, that's not, that's an in-game CD, I'm assuming, not a separate disc, because this game only has one disc. All right, how do I go back? Travel back. So that's weird. I mean, I guess this right here, next to the monitor, is actually a little CD slot. All right, we don't get to learn about the Brachiosaur for now. Uh, I think that says Visitor Center, right? So we can go this way. We also have the maybe compy. I suppose it'll tell us. Pro Compsognathus, so the correct species for Jurassic Park, the novel. Quick miniature dinosaur, roll, a small bipedal forest predator, the dinosaur equivalent of a kit fox. Compi is one of the old-time smallest dinosaurs, about the size of a coyote, 10 pounds. Fossil footprints show that Compi's traveled in big packs up to a dozen or more. So yeah, I do think it's actually cool that some of these Jurassic Park games do have these kind of informative dino facts. Do we have more? Compies were as fast as coyotes, maybe 30 miles an hour. They had very sinuous bodies. They loved to move in underbrush. Okay, I don't know why it doesn't just play them all, but it looks like <laughs> there are four video files. Compies had sharp claws, long toes. They could climb trees real well. Thanks, Robert. Pack hunters usually nest in groups, so did compies, and they would defend their nests in groups, too. All right. We've learned about the Procompsognathus. So can, can you tell which paleontologist the guy in the Lost World is based off of? Okay. Got like a key card? White key. So I'm guessing there is actually some puzzles around. Is this a nest? Well, there's eggshells, but there's no egg. Compies stole the key card and shoved it in their nest. The compies really have become kind of like the little trickster, like, shit disturbers in the series. Like, yeah, they did kill somebody, and they did maul a little kid, but in the more modern stuff, like Camp Cretaceous, they really are just there to <laughs> be little dicks, but not, like, super harmful. They like to steal stuff and annoy people. So, so far it doesn't seem like there's a lot of, a lot of paths we can take. Alright, we're at the gate. It's weird that I can't look up. You can only look left and right. So there's a dilo pen. You notice these ones don't have CD slots, so I guess they automatically will give you the facts. Swift's double-ridged dinosaur, roll, large predator, might have had a neck frill and spat poisonous saliva, but actually no. <laughs> might not have. The animal with the best poison delivery system is the spitting cobra. Could some dinosaurs spit? Could be. <laughs> yeah, see, even he says, could be. There's no evidence that we can use to prove that they couldn't at all. It's like a recently, you know, prehistoric planet which was a very good little series done in the, the BBC style of, you know, their other big budget animal documentaries, but about dinosaurs. They made up a lot of behaviors for that as possibilities, including a really goofy one with the Dreadnoughtus having, like, inflatable neck sacks and the Carnotaurus dance. Fossil footprints show that Dilove's hunted in pairs, top speed about 35 miles an hour. I will never be able to look at a Carnotaurus the same after seeing those little flappy blue arms.
Dilophs had big crests on their head, and maybe they had crests along the neck too, like a lot of birds and lizards do. Neck crests can be a warning. Birds and lizards flare their crests when they're about to attack. He has to say maybe because of the, had bodies built like because of Jurassic long, Park, but flexible, great for swimming. You can tell he doesn't believe it. Anybody else remember the Microsoft dinosaurs like edutainment disc? Because I definitely remember that. I wonder if I can do a video on that. Like, it's not really a game. It's kind of. It's kind of just a, a interactive encyclopedia in a way. But I thought that was pretty cool as a kid. It's just these little these little factoids are reminding me of that. Gallimimus. I'm guessing that these mean that these dinosaurs are in this area. Otherwise it would be weird to find these signs here. Galleys are the fastest dinos on the island, up to 50 miles an hour, and one of the smartest. Galleys had front claws like grizzly bears, long and straight, great digging tools. Galleys could dig prey out of their burrows, and they could use their claws to dig very deep nests. Very different from how they're portrayed in the movie as basically giant ostriches. Did they have... An enclosure? I feel like it's never really clarified whether the Brachiosaurs and Gallimimus on that big plane are fenced in or if they're just kind of there. Because, I mean, the gate that they pass through, you know, the Jurassic Park gate, kind of implies that the visitor center itself has a, a perimeter fence all the way around it so they could have free roaming, less harmful dinosaurs like that. But I don't know if that stuff's ever clarified, if there's some kind of like <laughs> Jurassic Park encyclopedia that very specifically describes what was on the island at the time. Galleys had a stiff torso, stiff tail, like a T-Rex. They couldn't maneuver in dense forest. That's why they live on the plains. Galleys could attack you with the long reach of their forepaws, and they could kick you with their hind feet, too. There are some modern bird species that try to sneak their eggs into another mother's nest. If the mother detects these sneaky eggs, she can roll them out of her nest, and that could have happened with the dinos. <laughs> Something about that face. But yeah, like a lot of behavior stuff with dinosaurs, by necessity, can't really just be based on fossil evidence because a lot of those behaviors don't leave really fossil evidence, you know. You can only get the basics, like habitat and diet and stuff like that. Everything else, you kind of have to guess at, which is where they use a lot of comparisons to similar ecological niches or even physiological design for existing creatures or dinosaurs to try to understand them better. Like, obviously, some things are just going to be complete guesses, you know, like the, the inflatable neck frills or the Carnotaurus love dance. So, I see people who are complaining about Prehistoric Kingdom, or Prehistoric Kingdom, that's a game, not a not the show, it's Prehistoric Planet, about it not having accuracy because there's no specific scientific basis for some of the stuff they showed, but like, the style of the show is more or less, it's presented as if it's a documentary, so I can see why they say that they might have an issue with it being presented as facts when it's all, not all, but a lot of it is supposition on how these dinosaurs lived. I like that they also got actual footage just for the transitions. Alright, well, here's the explorers. Uh, that means it's the Tyrannosaurus paddock over here. Hmm. She seems like she's home. She's come back to her her paddock. Velociraptors. Also, what are those green squares under the time? Is that our help? Are we actually gonna have to worry about dying? Uh, looks like we might need a disc for the Tyrannosaur. Yep. 
Sorry, bub, you're gonna have to do some exploring if you want to hear T-Rex facts. So yeah, I mean, it's a very different kind of Jurassic Park game, but like, this seems kind of neat. And I think more of the reason this wouldn't have done well is because it's a Sega CD game, and the Sega CD was a flop. Really, I guess the Sega CD was probably the point where Sega started having consistent trouble with all of their console efforts, because, you know, there was the Sega CD, and then the, uh, the Saturn, and then the Dreamcast, and none of those did great. Not to say that there's nothing good, though I actually probably can't name any good Sega Saturn games, but the Dreamcast certainly has a decent roster of interesting ideas. A triceratops, giant rhino-like dinosaur. Roll, gentle herding plains roamer with tremendous horns. Very protective of family. Triceratops was the most dangerous plant-eating animal that ever evolved. Remember the moody one from Jurassic Park the game? Triceratops had very strong legs. It could accelerate in a charge right away and hit a top speed of 30 miles an hour. The Triceratops' head was huge and heavy, but perfectly balanced. It could whip its long horns in any direction. Triceratops had a strong bony frill that protected the neck. All around the frill were sharp edges. When it swung the frill, it was a deadly weapon. I swing my frill back and forth. <laughs> Sorry. Ceratopsidae. Dinosaurs and birds have a lot in common. Since a lot of birds mate for life today, Maybe the dinosaurs did too. Like birds today, some dinosaur parents might have been fiercely protective of their young. I wonder why there's the so many eggs in one nest, it looks like two or three or four females got together and laid in the same place. <laughs> Every time. It's like a mugshot after he's done talking. I can't remember what I was going to say. There was something there. It's gone now. There was the thought here. It's gone now. Okay, we're in the plains now. Uh, you're not gonna come at me with hostile intent, are you? I mean, we do need to steal its eggs, so... Uh... Uh, okay. <laughs> What's in this tree? A, a branch? Am I gonna... Am I gonna lure away the Triceratops with a branch? Branches! Hey! Hey, you want the stick, stupid? Nope. I mean, I guess we don't really need to bother it. I really wish we had a map, but I guess I should have been paying attention to the compass before I traveled, because now I'm not sure which way it goes back. So yeah, we have Triceratops around, but I don't see a nest. So there's not much of a reason to bother them. Maybe the branches are for someone else. I don't know, I'm not gonna just start blasting for no reason. Okay, we're back at the end, so I went backwards. Can I go in here? No. I can't just walk through the breach. I guess because there is a big fucking drop right next to it. I mean, I do like the level of detail in the sprite work, even if the color palette is a little restricted. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Is, why do the sketches have little, little pixels of color in them? It makes it seem like they're artifacts rather than actually supposed to be there because they're sketches. 
I don't know what this means. I think I gave him the branch? Okay. We had to use it on that one. Um, I mean, can I open this? There doesn't seem to be an interact option on it. we need this. I just can't tell if we need to, like... We need to pry it open or something? Because there's nowhere to interact with it. Alright, well... I'll just leave it for now. That's the problem. It is a point-and-click adventure game, but it's... It's not one that gives you a lot of info, because there's no one to talk to or anything. I cannot get another branch, so hopefully they stay away. <laughs> okay, so there's that road. Is there another road? There is. That goes west. It goes east. Alright. Got a big sleeping fat ass here. What is this music? Very kind of cheeky. Hi. You're not gonna let me pass, are you? Okay. Here's, uh... One of the... Uh, Staff jeeps. I don't know why this is flipped over. <laughs> I think I died because I annoyed the Triceratops too much. Uh, okay. I was like, do you just have to restart the game? <laughs> at that point. Oh yeah, the game over theme. So yeah, I guess you can die in this. It'd be nice if there was any on-screen indication of that instead of just fade to black. Like, we didn't even get it charging at us. Maybe it did and I just wasn't looking at it. Can I load? No saved games to load. I don't know how to save. Alright, well. It's actually not too hard to just blast through everything we did already, because it's a point-and-click adventure game. I know there's a playthrough of this on YouTube that's like an hour long, so... Clearly, it's not a very long game when you know what to do. There's nothing else here. I'm guessing I had to honk the horn and then get the fuck away from the jeep. Or just not honk it like eight times. I mean, we're not going to go too far in this. I would actually consider playing through this whole thing, though, just because it's kind of neat. And, like I said, it's not very long. I got to stop mixing up these two buttons. I don't know why they made travel a separate button from interact, considering you can only do one or the other at a time. You know, like if I pressed interact here, nothing would happen. We didn't actually uh, touch this thing. Apparently it doesn't do anything though. That's where we came from. Try going the other way. Okay, we got some eggs. 
We got some Gallimimus. They're probably not going to be happy about us taking their eggs. Is that a rock? Big rock. <laughs> Throw big rock at Gallimimus to spook them away. We got a path there. We got a path there. We got a log. I have to shoot the log. Uh, okay. I, I guess that spooked him. They didn't like me shooting that log. I, I seriously don't know what that did. Maybe just shooting scared them off anyway. I didn't even need the, the log. Alright, well. There's two Gallimimus eggs secured. Uh, now which way do we come from? Again, I gotta actually look at the compass directions. Caution. Don't go this way. Oh, there's more eggs. I don't even need them. Oh, we could probably get through there with the wire cutters. What is that? Is someone's backpack? I can't examine it or anything. Can't throw a rock at it. So yeah, I'm assuming that like, if we just try to walk up and take these eggs, we'll just die. Is there like a save button I can do on here? I assume saving is something you can do, I just don't know how to do it. Maybe there's actually like a terminal or something I have to activate. I mean, it is a little shitty that some of the items are just, like, a rock or a stick, because you're not going to notice that when you're panning across here, that, like, you should look at that. Generally, it has to be an item that actually stands out for you to notice it. Didn't I just come from here? But I can't go back? <laughs> I don't know where that travel point is. Okay, that actually just did damage. I guess I didn't shoot him hard enough. So yeah, you can die in this, and you can take damage. So you can't just fuck around and touch everything. Alright, well let's not go this way then. Also, it seems like stuff you don't have the item for that you can interact with doesn't show that you can interact with it at all. So that's a little unclear, because you'll end up being like, oh, I guess I can't do anything with this, I just won't come back and try it when I get items. But at least most of the puzzle items are probably reasonable. Well, here's the visitor center. Uh, doesn't look great. It's very compressed. <laughs> oh. Okay. So instead of panning around here, because this is like 3D modeled, you actually have to load the transition. Uh, okay. Some more pliers. Maybe we can use those to open that metal bin. Computer here that we can't do anything with. 
The music in this game is very strange. What the hell was that sound? Was that part of the background track? I thought that was an error sound when I tried to go up the stairs. Like, no, you can't. Remember these crates? These were here when Jerry was here. I bet those crates are in there in the movie and I've just never noticed them because, like, who cares about some fucking crates? Okay, I bet I can swipe my white card here. No? I mean, that looks like a white thing on the key slot. But yeah, so you can't examine it or anything, so you have no idea specifically what it wants. about this door. Robert Muldoon, I think that says, in Almost Impossible to Read. Clark. Let's say Atherton? Okay. I assume this keycard opens one of the doors in this room. But some of the doors also just have crates in front of them. Which seems like a bad organization. Control room. Did I try this one? Oh, that was the correct one. So I wonder if we can do anything useful here, like locate dinosaurs. Is there a phone ringing? I'm also curious what that, that satellite thing that's been blinking the whole time since we started is. What the fuck are these? Uh, forgive me if I don't remember the very important purple rectangles from the Jurassic Park control room. Yeah, well, it doesn't look like we can touch anything else except... Ah, damn it. I didn't actually mean to touch the edge of the screen. There's not, like, anything else we can do here. So let's dig into the Unix system. With its weird 3D interface. Video telephone. Hi, I'm Emily Shimura. I'll be your contact on this mission, so keep an eye on your message light. It means I have new information for you. Okay, that's what we that is. We were worried when our telemetry showed that your helicopter crashed. But as long as you're not hurt, keep going. We're pulling you out as soon as you've got at least one egg from each dinosaur species in the incubator. I'll check on you again in a couple of hours. Oh, and, uh, by the way, good luck. Thanks, Dr. Ishimura. They really don't give a shit about the helicopter pilots, too. They didn't even ask if he survived or anything. She's like, well, at least you're not hurt. Bad news. We've picked up a blip moving toward the park. We don't know who it is, but it looks suspicious. San Jose Airport Security caught someone trying to sneak out through the perimeter fence. Someone paid him $500 to tape a little box to the helicopter you flew to the park. It must have been an explosive. That's why you crashed. And now an unidentified aircraft is moving toward the island. This is serious. Don't waste any time. We have to get those eggs off the island as soon as possible. I'll call back as soon as we know more. I mean, that's pretty fucked up. Someone stuck, like, <laughs> explosives to our helicopter. Probably Biosyn. So there's a video telephone. Um, do we have, like, other... other options here? Oops. So we can save from here, which means you're supposed to come back here after you get some eggs or whatever. You know, you come in, deposit your eggs, and then go back out into the park. But yeah, I actually think this is kind of neat. It's a very different Jurassic Park game, but not like a an unwelcome kind of different. At least in my opinion. Like, at the time when this came out, there was already a plethora of top-down and side-scroller type Jurassic Park action games. So having something that's a little more explory definitely seems interesting. I guess we'll wrap up here, because again, this is not a very long game. 
but it certainly seems like there's a lot of items to find. We haven't even found a CD for any of these dinosaurs yet, so there's got to be a decent amount of park here to explore. And I'm guessing, like, down here somewhere, there's also the genetics lab. So you can deposit your eggs. Which is probably over here. No? I don't remember where the lab was relative to the visitor center entrance. Even though, as it turned out, it was uh, pretty much for show and not actually a real lab. I mean, it was a real lab, but, like, they, they didn't produce dinosaurs there. They produced them on Sorna. Alright, so yeah, thanks for joining me for this look at Jurassic Park for the Sega CD. I, I might come back to this, like I said. I think it actually might be worth playing through. It really depends, I guess, how bullshit the puzzles are, and how many things can instantly kill you like that Triceratops. Because if that stuff's not too bad, then, you know, it'd be worth seeing where this goes. But, until the next one, you folks all take care.